Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Gawa arigato! This here's Wichita Roboto. <laughs> That's, I'm just kidding. This here's Wichita Rutherford from over at 5 Minutes with Wichita.com. And these boys over here at Otaku Generation, oh, they's a really kick it in the hiney, and you know why? Because it's a good show, you know why? Because they try hard, you know why? I don't think they know why, they just do it because they love it, that's why. Oh, you boys just are doing so well. <laughs> and you're precious. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise! The yakking never gets old. It rocks me to my dumb hole. Then bring all the otaku to the yard! Otaku generation, they rock hard! Otaku generation show! 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 Otaku generation Welcome to show 931. Hi, hello, everyone. I am Alan. I am Matt. And I am Paul. Okay, so we are still on our adventure of the spring <laughs> impressions. Uh, we do this so often lately, I, I can't even keep the seasons in check. Um, so that being said, we're going to skip sort of all the what's fresh and what's spank and what's hot, whatever, uh, and jump right in. We got, what, another another six fresh That's right things to talk about another six episode ones for the new season and shall we start off with alice gear aegis expansion dun 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 and this is an anime based off of the alice gear aegis video game and uh it's basically about idols who have special powers that allow them to wear mecha suits that fight monster alien invaders that's that's about all there is to it yeah, there's some girls and they talk in idle voices and some of them have nose blades because they are so excited to be around the other girls. And they have their daily life as idle monster fighters who don't actually fight any monsters because they are in an agency which, you know, where they are just kind of lovable doofuses uh, for people who love this sort of thing, I should say. I am not saying they are objectively lovable. <laughs> and do some training for the new wannabe idle alien fighter who is... I don't know. This 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 is lame. I mean, this is one of I, well, I we, we after an extremely promising first week, uh, th uh, there were a couple of shows uh, this week that really dragged things down for me, and this one, yeah, a ton of bricks. There there were a couple of couple of shows this week where I was like, is this like a forty five minute episode? Because this really feels longer than a regular episode, and it's like, no, you're only nineteen minutes in. And it still took half an hour to get through the last like five minutes of it. Yeah. Um, um, OGLink.com slash 6MP um, available on High Dive. High Dive does not disappoint with the quality of the things that they license. Yeah. And then we've got something up next, which is almost as deep. Uh, let's see. No, what's this? not no. at all. <laughs> what's this called? Kizuna no Alil. And it's about Kizuna Ai, who is a virtual idol, which is, if possible, even less interesting than an, a real idol. Well, I, I think she is, in fact, an actual virtual, uh, like, VTuber mm -hmm. personality in the real world. And this is her spin-off anime, which she does not feature in. She is merely <laughs> the best VTuber who has ever lived and all, you know, just aspire to have as great an effect on humanity as this VTuber. Yeah, um, basically this, this isn't about 
Kazuna I. This is about a wannabe idol named Miracle thinks that Kazuna I is just great and she would love to be an idol just like her. Um, this this is a, a show that just sort of wanders around from place to place. You have an intro by Kazuna I and she sings a song which has nothing to do with the episode. And then you sort of start the episode proper. And then there's another song for no reason. But Matt, it turns out that some people in this, you know, modern degenerate age do not think that Kizuna Ai is the best VTuber who ever lived. They think that like maybe some of these other new new folks are okay. And but not not our main character. She has only one love in her heart. I I, I and I'm I'm assuming that if you're already a fan of Kizuna Ai, you'll want to watch this, but I honestly cannot see anything in it that would make people fans of Kazuna Eye or anything that would really recommend this show. Now, this is basically yet another idol anime minus. Uh, I, it's one thing to recommend it, and I hesitate, and I use the word recommend with great caveats, of course, is that there are actually uh, both uh, men and women in her, the idol school she's going to. It is not just a group of, you know, plucky girls with slightly different colored hair and hairstyles. Ah. Uh. But other than that, there is, this is you know the the most wallowing of wallowingly generic shows. <laughs> and uh, by those descriptions, if you're interested, oglink.com/6mq. Okay, so next up, we have a slight change in that it's a fantasy story called Mashle, or in English, Mashle Magic and Muscles, and the gimmick is that. This is a fantasy world where just about everybody has magic ability and wanders around with a magic wand doing rather ordinary things, but using magic to do it. Well, um, they don't they don't just have magic. They have magic because of a concerted program of eugenics and murder, whereby anybody who doesn't have sufficiently strong magic power is weeded out of the human race. This is our, our premise here. Yes. And... Our protagonist, Mashle, is this guy who lives in the middle of the dark forest with his grandfather, and Lord love him, he's just not the brightest spoon in the in the silverware drawer. Um, all he does is go out into the forest and do training exercises that his grandfather gives him because he's rather simple-minded. And if the grandfather tells him to go out into the forest and exercise, that's all he does. Uh, he lifts weights. He does squat thrusts. He does squat thrusts while lifting weights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to the result that he is incredibly well-muscled, very, very powerful. And this is kind of a problem for the grandfather because when Mosh comes home at night, he can't remember whether the front door pushes or pulls open so he just sort of rattles on it until it breaks and that's how he gets in the house at night <laughs> the real key thing is M mosh lee or marshall whatever yeah um has no magic ability right that's the whole thing right he... so he is so he is the most powerless person but he can kick your magic's ass that's it. That's the premise of this show. Yeah, his his whole shtick is that the whole reason why his grandfather and he live in the forest is that his grandfather was a guy who had a very hard time in magic society because he was just sort of like weak magically. And then he found this baby, which had no magical mark on him one day, because apparently every time somebody is born in this world, they sort of evaluate your magic somehow and then put a tattoo on your face, like just a little wobbly line that signifies something about your magic style. And this baby was abandoned by the side of the river with no mark on his face. And this guy just said, oh, a little baby who sucks even worse at magic than I do. It's a cruel world for the unmagical I will take him away and raise this foundling as my own son, and we will stay away from the magic world 
and just live our lives in peace. And uh, that works for basically 20 years with our, you know, slightly dim uh, Mashal or Mashal. Actually, I don't know that he's usually called Mash in the show, so I don't know what the official pronunciation is. Yes, with good um, reason, because his mm -hmm. name is unpronounceable. <laughs> You know, he's he is he's very single minded, dutiful, confused, and but you know, he also has very poor impulse control. Uh so he'll just kind of do stuff because it seems like a good idea. And then oh, wasn't I supposed to do that? I'm sorry. And he is in fact legitimately sorry and yeah. his uh, adoptive father is like, Oh, I just can't stay mad at you even though you've destroyed our house and you know, and so the the basic premise of this story is that through a convoluted series of events, he gets discovered by the police of the main magic city, which is curiously kind of medieval, and yet everyone walks around in three-piece suits. A, a bizarre deal is struck wherein the police will not have him executed for non-magicalness, since he is so strong and physically fit that he's able to basically punch magic to death. If, if he can go to the Magic Academy and get named their best student of the year and get, you know, the Magic Student Lifetime Scholarship, the, the police chief will not have him executed for non-magicalness. And he will, in fact, um, generously share his prize money and uh and live the good life and mosh is just sort of like okay and off he schleps to magic school yeah so this this show is all about the comedy right this is a, totally a comedic everything is played for a laugh everything is for setting up that next comedic beat you have you know one of the characters who'll be commenting on the wacky things that are going on in in, in classic uh bokeh uh, Mansai mm -hmm. style. Uh, you've got so uh, you know it. This is frankly the best show we watch. Yeah, I was this. just going to say this is the highlight of the six, and it it only goes downhill from here. It, and the thing yeah, this really drives home is how little subtlety we have this season so far. I mean, everything is you know they there is. You know, this is the loudness wars of anime writing. You know, there is basically nothing but full-on melodramatic screaming. Uh, you know, that no character has any subtlety or, you know, nuance to their writing or character or reaction. And for this show, that works fine, right? Because this is just, oh, this is such a dumb idea. Let's just run with it. And they run with it. <laughs> and it's kind of fun. And, you know, so the things like, you know, M MASH is like, you know, man, I really could go for some cream puffs. And so they, they work the cream puff thing really hard. They work it so hard that it's actually the entire closing uh, credit sequence. Yeah, the, the closing song is all about um, MASH's sweet tooth and all the various yummy pastries and candies he likes to eat and, and and the police force are these you know boot stepping sneering sadists wrapped up in their own power as they gleefully beat up citizens for minor crimes and and we're theoretically supposed to cheer as mosh uh you know shows them what for except of course the, the cunning head of the local police is the one who talks him into accepting this challenge to go to magic school so he does not like basically murder his fa his uh, adoptive father this is um, a show that i thought maybe bryce would totally like it, it's fun i mean i enjoyed this i am totally watching this if the second episode had been out i would have totally just started watching it next instead of whatever the hell else was we're going to talk about <laughs> um, oglink.com says 6MR. I think that's probably a recommendation from this group. Yeah, this is a recommend. I mean, if that sounds like fun, if you want this kind of fun sort of shonen-y fantasy comedy yeah. thing, yeah, it's, it, it delivers. Okay, so next up is My Home Hero. Um, this is adapted from the seinen manga. It's a sort of crime and sort of film noir style style of story basically our protagonist is 
you know, an, an inoffensive salary man. He's an ordinary guy. He's happily married. He's got a daughter who's of the age when she's dating guys and living on her own. And he begins to suspect that something is up with his daughter. She's hard to get in touch with lately. When he does actually manage to see her, she has a, a bandage covering her face and she's wearing sunglasses and a baseball cap. And when he finally gets her to take it off, her face is terribly bruised. And uh, her lame excuse that she uh, fell down three or four times by accident doesn't really seem convincing to him. And so he exercises his fatherly instincts and he starts um, following her around and he basically discovers that her boyfriend is an abusive asshole. And the more he overhears of this guy um, crassly bragging to his friends over the cell phone is that he's not only just an asshole, he is very deliberately abusing his, his beautiful daughter, trying to steal all her money, and then he very blatantly says that he's going to kill her as soon as he's like milked her for everything he can this is just horribly incensed incenses him he basically says well it's either him or the daughter he ambushes the guy in his daughter's apartment and gets lucky and manages to kill him now this is not the good thing you might think it is because he discovers afterwards the guy is a member of the yakuza so it's not just like a horrible asshole that you can kill and say it was self-defense. He's got the fixes in because he's a Yakuza. The system is corrupt and the Yakuza will come after him and basically either make sure he spends the rest of his life in prison because they have an in with the justice system or they will just flat out kill him for revenge because, you know, Nobody disses the Yakuza. How are we supposed to go along running an organized criminal organization if we just let ordinary citizens kill our guys for trying to kill them? It's all about you have to see why you got to die and probably your wife and daughter too. This, yeah, so this is, you know, I, I think the film noir is, is actually a very good call out for this. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, um, more or less, you know, ordinary persons sucked into something, uh, outside of his control, you know, but it's his own choices and sin that cause him to be drawn ever further in, leading to his destruction, the destruction of everyone else around him. An ordinary man, he makes that, that one action that forever separates him from his innocent, normal life, and now he is irrevocably set on the path, being more and more evil to sort of cover up the previous evil escape punishment for his crimes and in, during which he's bound to commit more and more crimes. So the interesting thing here is it isn't just him, right? So this is very much going to be about his family, about mm. his daughter, uh, who, you know, is kind of like, actually like this guy and thinks she could change him, right? It's his wife who says, no, we should totally cover this up because she walks in as he's in the process of, you know, trying to figure out what the hell to do with this body. He just, you know, bashed on the head with a rice cooker. For a Yakuza, is there any more humiliating way of being killed than like just bopped over the head with a rice cooker? So from like a concept per uh, uh, perspective, this sounds pretty good, right? I mean, I like the idea of this as I'm talking about it. The problem is watching it is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, I mean, the main character is just, you know, this cringing and fatuous doofus. Mm. I mean, he talks in this whiny voice for the entire episode to show just how much of a sad sack schmuck he is. And he loves his mystery novels and he loves his daughter just so much, even though she's not, she used to be such a nice girl. They, they're just, you know, it's this thing where there's no subtlety, there's no realism of any sort to the presentation. You know, if they had made even the faintest of nods that would let us regard these characters as like actual people as opposed to something being you know, like 
press it about the screen on a little popsicle stick, it would work better. And this moment <laughs> almost works, right? And, you know, the fact we've got, like, some of these, you know, very interestingly drawn Yakuza bad guys, but, like, the the... The, the the boyfriend is like, look at me, I'm so bad. Yeah, I murdered the I, I I'm just gonna murder this girl like I murdered the last couple, but not till I take all her money. And and it's just like, no, this is not this is not how it works, right? <laughs> the boss is, you know, like I'm not a brutal man. I'm I'm weak, you know. But the one thing I I want I love is my horrible son. In this first episode, you know, doofus dad almost murders uh, this uh, this guy, maybe, maybe, or maybe he was one who died. I I, I kind of lost track. Some of the character designs are good, but the animation is terrible i mean i just it's not just like the muted color palette which is kind of a stylistic um convention for shows that are grim and gritty or fatalistic it's like you're not going to have the the pretty palette that you have in an idol girl show well let's see this is based off of a manga uh, wikipedia says that it's got like 19 volumes to the present day so i'm presuming that this could run for a long long time depending on how popular it gets. Boy, you know, and this is the kind of thing that doesn't feel like it should run for a long time. I mean, maybe there's a Breaking Bad arc in there where this guy becomes, you know, the head of his own Yakuza gang. Mm -hmm. You know, that arc can work. I mean, like, if, thinking back to that first episode of Breaking Bad, I mean, one of the most brilliant moments of television ever. In this has not been Mission of Guilt. <laughs> This lacks any of that gravitas. It, it lacks any of the drama. And, you know, I want to like this. I, I do, but I I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to like this. OGLink.com slash 6MS. Yeah, it's a pass for me. All right. Well, let's see what's next on our list. And it is opus.colors. Okay. Let me just say I like the last show, My Home Hero, better than this. <laughs> Yeah. Um let's see. This is kind of a science fictiony artsy show. The Crunchyroll page for this oddly does not have a have a description of it, but uh okay. Uh, the description is, this is a boy idol show made by somebody who just tried out Tilt Brush for the first time. Right, yeah. I think this was like, I don't know, I didn't check the back end on this, like the background, to see if someone thought VR was going to be, or augmented reality was going to be a real big thing, so let me make a manga about it. It reeks of like that premise idea that they think that they hope that that's going to be a, a popular trend. Well, so, so Tilt Brush, if you're not familiar, was an early VR demo released by, I think, Google, mm. uh, where, you know, you can, you know, put on your VR headset and take your VR controllers and you can draw a 3D sculpture in the air in front of you. Oh, is that what this is uh, running with? Okay. Yeah. So, so I, the only thing that makes sense is, you know, somebody tried this. Maybe it was an executive. Maybe it was a writer. Maybe it was, you know, so, somebody uh, involved with the conception of the idea for this show. And he's like, whoa, man, this is cool. We should make an anime about this without realizing that, no, you shouldn't make an anime about this. But they went ahead and made an anime about this. Uh, and unfortunately, they had no other ideas than that. So they decided, okay, well, I guess... You know, we'll do a boy idol show, except mm. it's, it's going to be a we're, we'll put them in school. Oh, and we like competition. So there's two classes of people, the cool, evil, mean directors and then the stupid artists who like make the work. And you can't you literally cannot make a work of VR art. Uh, which is now sensation art, where you can uh -huh. the addition to just seeing it. But you literally cannot make that unless you have one of these director dudes and one of these artist dudes working together, even though they hate each other so much. Yeah, and I mean, just as a as a fake drama story premise, the the directors, the graders, go to their own school at the at the sensation art college and all the artists go to their own school which symbolically is at the bottom of the hill and you can't get to the upper level because you know you need a special key to use the l the escalator and there's a monorail that goes there but of course unless you have the 
the special ticket or an invitation from somebody at the greater school. You can't go there. Um, I don't know if it's deliberate, but greater sounds like greater, mm. just symbolically to my mind. Um, and the other thing that bugged me about this was the animation. Like, the characters look like mannequins. Everyone has these sort of, like, dead, fixed eyes and a gaze that is just devoid of personality. It's because they know what anime they're in. Yeah, but it's it, it just is off-putting to my sensibilities. So I, I can't recommend watching this. And, you know, wouldn't you just like to take them home and cuddle them or swoon about nope. them? Or watch it, oglink.com slash 6MT. No, 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 not at all. Would Never. not watch it, is what I'm yeah. suggesting. I would, or would want to watch it. That's what This I'm is saying. one of those shows that crushes the life out of you, not because it's terrible, but just because it is so crushingly ordinary. All that right. being said, we have one more show. We have our sixth and final show this episode. And this is a mouthful, pardon me, while I read this out. Yusha Gashinda Murabito no Orega Hota Oto Shiainai Yusha Ga Ochita Keke. This is wisely abbreviated in English as the legendary hero is dead. And I just want to say it's really great. We can end with a show that we can legitimately, thoroughly, and totally hate. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I mean, did say. We're, we're, it, it all goes down, right? Downhill. In this case, it's alphabetical, too. The, the concept here is, what if an isekai show, or a fantasy show, I guess, but everybody's an asshole you hate? So that's most of the anime? <laughs> okay, this is a uh, fantasy world adventure comedy kind of show. Uh, it's based on a manga of the same name, which has been running for since, like, 2014. <laughs> Uh, it has 20 volumes, but the basic gimmick is that our protagonist is, um, a pervy peasant. And I mean, he has got this weird stocking fetish where he, he's a, a daikon, a radish farmer. And when he has a particularly plump and shapely daikon, he just can't stop himself from putting it in a a sheer lady's stocking and caressing it. Mm. Yep, uh, and playing and fondling it. Yeah. And just, you know, muttering to himself. And uh, since the land is being overrun by devils, um, since the, the, the legendary hero once upon a time sealed away all of the devils and saved the land, but the binding is coming undone, so the devils are sneaking back into the human world and you know, eating people and laying waste to things, and just generally behaving in a in a very socially unacceptable manner. Um, so the peasant guy is like, I know, I will defend my humble radish farm by uh, building a pit trap with sharpened bamboo stakes at the bottom. It does not work. Fortunately, he is saved from being devoured by a demon by the legendary hero who just happens to be stopping by after handily defeating the demon wanders into the pit trap like an idiot and gets himself killed <laughs> you don't get to be a legendary hero without having a adventuring party full of various mysterious diverse and potent allies and it turns out that the legendary hero made a deal with the necromancer in his party that if he was ever killed before ending the demon menace that the necromancer would reanimate his body somehow so the legendary hero could continue his career of fighting the demons since you can't just have a zombie hero wandering around and fighting demons effectively the necromancer says well he managed to kill off the legendary hero so this guy must be secretly very powerful. I'll transmigrate his soul into the hero's body and thereby restore the hero to life after a fashion such that he can continue adventuring and saving the land. The problem with this is that the peasant guy didn't actually defeat 
the legendary hero with his power. He just built a trap and the hero sort of stumbled into it because he was being careless. As a result, he does not have what you would call a lot of magical energy or heroic impulse to really reanimate the the legendary hero fully. Uh, he's got just enough mana such that the legendary hero's body will walk around and talk and do things, but it's not enough to actually prevent it from rotting. He doesn't have any heroic skills, and in fact, he's such a lame ass that even the super powerful magic sword that the legendary hero wields... Uh, sort of droops and wobbles around limply when you call upon its magic powers to manifest itself. That's Does right, it... kiddies. The, the hero can't get his sword up. Oh, I just didn't realize that. Uh, that makes it even worse. Uh, Not the entirety of the show, I'm afraid. Uh, so anyway, the peasant is now animating the corpse of the leg of the legendary hero, his girlfriend from the peasant village who wants to be a magic user is coming along for the ride. Cute girl necromancer following along because she's just aghast at how badly the uh, the strategy has, has fallen short. That's basically it. It's it's a an imposter kind of story for comedy, and that's that's the whole deal. I don't know if they expect him to become noble and powerful or if it's just going to be a farce the whole the whole um, run of the series. The, the main character's only characteristic is that he is a perverted creep, right? That is the, the sort of the structure of this show is no matter how bad everybody else is, he is the worst. But nonetheless, he's the main character. Here's the one we're following. He's the one who has to save everything, despite the fact he's a, you know, a, a, a wallowing schmuck. He's the designated protagonist. God help us. So by uh, uh, high recommendation not to watch this, oglink.com slash 6MU. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that is our final show for the spring 2023 season impressions part two. That's right. There are. Oh, okay. <laughs> part two. He hit you with a part two, Paul. Part two is what he said. Four? Okay, that's right. There are probably like three times as many as we've already watched. Yeah, it's hopefully not they're not three times as bad, though. Uh, um, I... Okay, with that being said, let's uh, let's rush out the door. Let's close up this week's show. For all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.taggeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. Um, we do make some other shows. Not many, more, but we do. Uh, yeah, you want to hit us up by email, you can do that uh, at taka.generation at gmail.com. You want to come in and hang out with us in Discord, um, oglink.com slash Discord. You want to become a supporter, oglink.com slash support or slash Patreon or slash uh, Patreon. Okay, I got stuff in this cup. going to pull out know. one of the things. The last, last few weeks have... Throwed me off my game here. Oh, uh, not <laughs> last week, though. I think last week was bad, wasn't it? We're so used to them being bad, we just expect exactly, them. Exactly, exactly. Aversity willingly undergone is the greatest virtue. No. Say it is. You know, there's your problem right there. Present tense. Present tense, not a fortune. Rejected. It's just the fact <laughs> that it started with aversity willingly threw me <laughs> off. Uh, you, you can tell once it's that hard to parse, they're trying to be profound as opposed to telling you about your future, which is what a fortune is supposed to do. It's not to provide you a, you know, uh, a, 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 a conundrum a, to read. A... All right. Well, there you go. There's the um, not a fortune for this week. Trend is broken <laughs> uh, forever. Who has taken bets on how long that was going to last? Well, it, it, I don't know. I thought last week it might have gotten broken. Regardless, thank you, everyone, for listening down in this week um and until next week everyone you know stay home stay safe and stay healthy and until then have a good one